So now that I've gone over my top 10 favorite movies of 2018, it's time to move on to the fun one. The top 10 cruddiest movies of 2018. Now, 2018 was actually a pretty good year for cinema. There wasn't nearly as much unmitigated garbage as last year, but it did still have its dark spots. We got painfully simplistic thrillers like Breaking In, and painfully outrageous thrillers like The Hurricane Heist. We got Traffic, Good Intentions, Terribly Rash Execution. We got Venom, How to Make Emo Peter Look Like He Belongs in the Dark Night. And A Wrinkle in Time, and Forever My Girl, and Axel, and Mile 22 all failed to make my day. But they're nothing compared to what's coming up next. Here are my picks for the top 10 worst movies of 2018. Number 10. Kicking off the list is the number one cure for insomnia this year, Winchester. The actors tried, but nobody could give a performance that would save this snooze fest. There have been worse horror movies this year, which I'll get to in a bit, but this one was the laziest and most cliched. Not a single original or surprising scare in the entire thing. I called every single one. That is except for maybe the one where the ghost finger protrudes from the sound hole as the guy was listening, but that wasn't even a scare, it was just stupid. Was it trying to give him a wet willy or something? What was the point? I honestly can't remember the last time that my facial muscles were so relaxed. I could feel them drooping below my Adam's apple. I was that bored and that reactionless while watching this movie. Number 9. Hands down most overrated movie of the year, though no surprise because every movie about racism and or civil rights is going to be critically acclaimed, Black Klansman. Yes, I'm still calling it that. Although seldom based on a true story, the script sounds as though it was written in crayon by an 8-year-old SJW, with the real-life subject taking a back seat to Spike Lee's ambition to spread lies about current events. The unsubtlety of this movie is so priceless that it takes away any historical intrigue that it could have had. When the note that a movie ends on is desecrating the American flag, it has secured its spot on my worst of the year list. Number 8 it's a pet peeve when one movie's worth of content gets stretched out into two parts, right? How about stretching it out into three movies? That's exactly what Kin seemed to be attempting to start. This movie was just nothing. It's totally uneventful. Not until the very end does the story start to get going. Once you get there, you feel as though you've watched a 100-minute first act of a movie, leading me to believe that they just wanted to find some way to make a trilogy. Fortunately, this movie bombed big time, so I think it's safe to say that there will be no next of kin. Number 7. The year's most obvious cash grab, though it didn't grab much cash, The Nutcracker in the Four Realms, with not one iota of originality and hardly anything to do with The Nutcracker. Annoying characters, lackluster effects, and cliched storytelling, not to mention how torturous it was the number of times the phrase, clever girl, was uttered. The last time they said it, I just went, STOP SAYING THAT! YOU KEEP MAKING ME THINK OF A MUCH MORE AWESOME MOVIE I COULD BE WATCHING! I could tell the rest of the theater liked it, though. As me and my friend were watching it, we felt like the two hecklers from the Muppets, curbing our boredom by making smart aleck remarks at the screen and ruining everybody else's time. If you were among that audience, I apologize, but I hated it. No good. Number 6. This much I know is true. That God bless the broken road sucks. Man, just as Pure Flix starts to get better, they have to bring something out that just does the bare minimum. This movie is so weepy, so incompetent, and so lazily written, and it exists only to deliver a message that you can easily be reminded of by simply going to church. I'm tired of getting the bare minimum. Pure Flix, take it from a brother in Christ, avoid the seven deadly sins. That includes slothfulness. Number 5. The Strangers was a pretty creepy movie. Strangers 2? Nope. The Dollface Killer was right. It was going to be easier next time, in the sense that there was zero effort. It's a sequel that's hopelessly dull and pointless with idiotic characters and running on Sharknado logic. Like the gas from a truck gets set ablaze and explodes, and not only is the person in the driver's seat still alive, but the truck is still drivable and topping it off with the most infuriating cliffhanger attempts since Unforgettable. Why am I doing this to the stranger's prey at night? Because it was made. Well, that and the fact that it's a bad movie. Number 4. And number 4 is the film with the stupidest title in a while, 
Peppermint. Seriously, how does an ice cream flavor someone gets in this movie have any relevance to the plot? And that's just the tip of the iceberg in how witless this movie is. It's fun to root for an action heroine, rooting for a psychopath, not so much. I can't feel for someone who holds a deadbeat father at gunpoint, forcing him to repent, and threatens to blow up the convenience store if they sell him any more alcohol. It's like if the Saw movies made John Kramer the hero. Peppermint is Death Wish, minus the commentary on guns, and ten times as illogical. Number 3. This was a franchise that started out okay, but it has officially been purged. The Bronze Raspberry this year goes to the first purge. On top of the fact that it has just as little respect for its audience as Black a Klansman, the writing is atrocious, the editing is maddening, and it's just a tone-deaf splatter of nonsense. And the acting. <laughs> there was that one evil guy, Skeletor, I think he was called. My friend decided to call him Mr. Candy Bar because he was just as embarrassingly over the top as that woman from the last movie. I want my candy bar. Yeah, and I want my money back, even though I work at a theater and see movies for free. Number two. If the filmmakers want truth, I'll give them the truth. Truth or Dare was a fatuous train wreck. Ever since I saw this movie, I've been carefully studying for any reason as to why I'm supposed to get scared by people constantly holding the face of the Grinch when he gets a wonderful, awful idea. But I've still got nothing. It's such a dopey idea filled with unlikable characters and tired false jump scares. Occasionally it drifts into so bad it's good territory, but not enough, so I can't even recommend it ironically. Just... just skip it. Number 1. What else could it be? Really, what else could it possibly be? The number one worst movie of 2018, say it with me in 3, 2, 1, Fifty Shades Freed. I feel like I could just copy and paste my summary of Fifty Shades Darker from my 2017 worst list. These movies are all the same toxic, abominable, life-draining waste. The only thing different about this one is that the soundtrack is overkill. Everything else is as inane, narratively void, padded out, and as moan-inducing as both of its predecessors. But at least, we are now Fifty Shades Freed, because hallelujah, it's over! No more of these movies ever! I tell you, I'm not even exaggerating when I say it was such a relieving feeling to watch the credits of this movie roll. I started playing Earth, Wind, and Fire, my friend and I went to the concessions counter and they topped us off, and we were just chugging down root beer with it streaming down the sides of our faces. Well, okay, it was just me doing that. My friend's not as weird as I am. Bottom line, all that the Fifty Shades movies have been doing for me is just taking up the number one spot on my end-of-the-year worst list. So now that those movies are over, there can be a more surprising number one entry next year. If I can get through three of those things, I can get through anything. So 2019, whatever garbage you're going to throw at me, bring it on. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this list. And be sure to let me know what movies from 2018 you hated the most. Like if you liked, subscribe for more. This is Pop Culture. I'm Alex Pop.